Welcome, London, and I'm back. Here's uh, one of the 10 reasons that I'm going to go over as to why I wanted to get elected, what I'm going to be measured on from over the, the four years that I'm here, and, and to what extent you're happy or not happy with what I'm doing as your elected official in Ward 9. So based on some history and what I've done in the past and, and what's been put in the paper, I think I should tell you exactly who am I. What have I done? What accomplishment have I had? How do I think? What do I do? And why I'm spending or not spending your money based on a zero tax that I'm trying to go for. So basically, I just, I'll just go over a bit of my history and give you a couple minutes so you'll know what I've done, how I think, and to what extent I'm excited about living in London and to what extent I want to do more things in London. So first of all, I was born in London. I, I lived in East London. My dad had a grocery store and, uh, and 50 cents allowance uh, every week. Uh, 15 cents went to the, the park theater and 10 cents for popcorn every year or every, every, day, every week, whether I liked it or not, to get out of that grocery business because he was busy. And then we moved uh, to South London. I went to Cumpsey and went to uh, South and uh, ended up uh, uh, meeting my, my wife at the, uh, the, one of the, uh, the dances at Victoria Hospital and, and uh, got married. Uh, that was many, many years ago. Uh, I had two kids and two grandkids. So basically, I'm a Londoner. I, I've been living here. I went uh, away to, to uh, Waterloo, began, became an electronic engineer, and uh, worked in Toronto for designing satellite systems and power station systems and the Annex system. Uh, and then came back to Northern Telecom in, in London years back, became their uh, test uh, engineer and bought the biggest computer system they ever bought at uh, uh, Sice Road in London, the uh, station apparatus division. We bought a million dollar computer test station for computer uh, testing uh, the hands-free telephone, which is my project and very successful. Um, and then I was transferred, transferred back to Toronto and I had a house in London, up in Northridge, by the way, and I didn't want to leave uh, London and leave the house to go back to Toronto, so I started my business in the basement. <laughs> $500, and uh, lo and behold, I got a job at Fanshawe just, just after that to teach the third year controls program. So I taught at Fanshawe for five years and moved the, the program from seven in the uh, computer and the uh, controls technology up to uh, 32 in that program in five years, and, uh, and it was quite successful. But of course, at the time, a lot, of them, a lot of the students didn't get a job just like it is today. So I kind of got excited about what can we do with these students. And so I put some in my basement and got a couple jobs and we put them to work. And that's how I started my company, uh, DG Henderson Associates Limited, and moved down to Egerton Street for a year into an old bank. And then, uh, and then went and bought a building out by Industrial Road on Oxford. And we were there about 30 years, uh, custom design and building microcomputer robotic systems, uh, grew the, the company to about 35 people. And we got a whole bunch of things happening. I did some product lines. I was doing Arctic snowplow controls. And I was doing half the North American market of what they call precipitator controls, the little, little diode stacks you sell to a company that's, that's put in acid rain abatement equipment to, to take the particulate out of the smokestack. And I had uh, half the North American market on that one, made some money, and, uh, and ended up uh, uh, doing some other things based on opportunities that came in the front door because we were doing research and development, electronics, and we were, we were really involved with, uh, with London trying to uh, grow the, the city into electronics because at the time the economic development department told me, well, no, we're not interested in electronics because we're into healthcare, we're into banking, we're into automotive, and, uh, and by the way, that's kind of what we are. So if you want to go to electronics, go on to, to Silicon Valley in Ottawa. And I said, no, I didn't want to do that. So I got a couple of friends of mine, and, uh, and we started up the London High Technology Association. I became president, and, we, and I was president for nine years. And every month we had a meeting. We got people together. We got a little uh, list of who was there. At the end of the nine years, we had about 220 companies in the High Technology Association directory. They had it down at the library. And, uh, and that was the success that we had growing electronics business. A lot of the students <laughs> that I, I, I learned, if not knew where they went to, after graduating from Fanshawe. <clears throat> and so it was quite a, a, a vibrant London uh, years ago. And certainly I was involved with it. And that uh, spun out. 
uh, over to Tech Alliance, and that's went up to through the went through the Chamber of Commerce one year, and then ended up at the university, and that's where Tech Alliance came from. We even gave them uh, ten five thousand dollars from what we had. We had no membership fee, but we came up with that kind of money. Then all uh, at the same time, we were kind of unhappy with economic development in London. So I got a bunch of the, the business people together, and we had some meetings at the Hunt Club. And we decided that uh, with one person, is all there was in economic development in London, I said, well, maybe we can do something as a, as a private-public partnership to do things in London that in, invigorated more of the business community. So about, we had about 200 people involved, and we started what they call Advanced London. So we were on the Internet. We had uh, uh, dialogue with, with the local people, and even when the free press was sold, the new editor said, hey, Dale, why don't you, uh, with the cha and, and we convinced them, with the Chamber of Commerce and the downtown business groups, group and the advanced London group, we had for a year, every Saturday, a paper, a full page in the free press, and we, we shared it, half uh, one, one day and, or one Saturday and then a quarter, quarter with, with the three groups, Chamber of Commerce, uh, advanced London, and the downtown business group, and we put out ideas of how to invigorate, come up with new ideas, and how we could create some jobs in London. Then, based on that, uh, well, a year later, we decided, well, why don't we see if we can get a, a London Economic Development Corporation set up with some funding from the city, which happened. We got Earl Orser involved and, and a whole bunch of the, 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 the major people in town, the business people in town, uh, got involved, and we, uh, several years back, <laughs> probably about 11 years, 12 years anyways, um, and we got the agreement to private-public partnership uh, with, the, uh, with the Economic Development London, Economic Development Corporation, LADC. I nominated eight of the 16 directors. I remember getting the thing going, and that's how it got going. And uh, it's been going now ever since, and we're, we're having uh, more and more successes as we come forth, but that is how... Uh, I got involved, and certainly with the Small Business Center, I was on the founding board of the Small Business Center, which worked on, on Oxford Street. It just got sold lately, uh, recently to, the, to um, Fanshawe College because the roof was leaking. But that was the most successful small business center in Canada. We pre created more jobs in that in a period of 10 years on Oxford Street than anyone in Canada. And there's a whole bunch of companies around London that are because of that. And even one of the companies, Stein Industries, bought my company from me, which is kind of an interesting uh, story. So, so basically, I've been involved with London, and, the, and I put my name in the, uh, in the hat uh, two years ago in Ward 9 and got elected with 212 volts polarity. And, uh, and now I'm trying to find out and figure out how does a small business person uh, get involved with politics, find out what the system is, Really realizing that you're one sound bite away from oblivion and one vote away from jail, believe me. Um, and this has been a real interesting learning curve for me, and I hope that uh, that I'm now going to uh, the new media, which is Internet, Dale TV, to try to get you the message as to what I think we can do together, how we can change London for the better, and to what extent can you kind of understand what I'm saying without being uh, 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 manipulated or changed by any media that, that go directly, and you can understand and hopefully understand what I'm trying to say and how we're trying to get the job done. Uh, with, with my company, I started electronic manufacturing, as I mentioned, on Oxford Street, and we grew that and did a whole bunch of uh, things for Northern Telecom, Bendix, Fram, Dow, GM, 3M, companies like that. And, uh, and then we ended up getting involved with uh, operating the racetrack computers as, as a service contract with the Western Fair. Well, it was there seven years, and we, we did that job. They never lost a, a computer uh, breakdown or any racing because of computer breakdown in seven years. And then uh, Charles Zervinsky from Flamber Down said, hey, he wants to do the same thing, he wanted to buy some equipment. I got involved helping him buy his equipment, and lo and behold, I, behold, I had a service contract in there for two years uh, running the computers in, 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 uh, in Flamber Downs. We had even did a dog track in Florida, getting involved with servicing computers, and lo and behold, uh, back in the 80s, there was a group that got a race date approved down Leamington and fell apart. It was 10 weeks before opening, and I and I'd put a quote in to, to put some computers in from where I knew I could get some computers that were surplus in the field. And lo and behold, they, they fell apart, so I made an application to, uh, to pick up the race dates 10 weeks before opening. 
as a race, and they gave it to me. So I thought, holy cow, here, <laughs> I have one of 24 race dates uh, uh, and gambling licenses in the province, and I had 10 weeks to do a whole bunch of things, like put a half mile of track lighting in, widen the track, uh, uh, starting gate, vault, uh, hire 85 people, um, start the, the, whatever the race uh, programs, bus people in from, from Detroit into Leamington, and we opened, I, I aimed the lights the night uh, before we opened, I aimed the lights, and we did, uh, we opened. We did over three summers, we did 5.6 million in sales in the first 87 days of operation. We created all those jobs. I mean, we were doing more on a day than, than, than Heinz <laughs> was doing in Leamington because of the spin-off effects and the racing going on, the people that were involved. It was an exciting time, and they ended up selling to the Agriculture Society. They wanted it badly, and they paid me cash, and it was like, wow. That was an experience I can talk about. So when I talk about anything to do with gambling or anything to do with uh, what we should be doing and to what extent we, um, with horses and all that, I got some real biased and certainly ideas of what is the best thing for the community and to what extent uh, uh, I can bring that to the party. Other things, as we uh, started, I ended up with seven companies or just with opportunities. People came in, wanted to do some things. so. Um, I got involved with healthcare. I mentioned that on one of the other tapes, but we ended up with a medical clinic uh, with four medical doctors, a doctor of Chinese medicine, homeopath, chiropractor, massage therapist, in the uh, operation down in Hamilton. And we had a branch also in Kitchener and one in London. And I learned a whole bunch about how the medical world works, how the medical field works, what you can and cannot do to make people healthy and happy. And, and with that, it spun off into two other companies. One was a nutraceutical company, and we had the biogenesis rep right across Canada. So we were uh, doing the chiropractors, doctors, selling them product. And then we got involved with a school for training physicians, dentists, pharmacists, uh, in their continuing medical education, hours of credit, all approved by the American Medical Association and Canadian Medical Association. And we did some great interesting things where we bumped into about 250 doctors over the, over the three conventions that we, ha we held. And they, they have, a, that's, a, that's a doctor, for example, in Canada, went around the world to find, try to find out what made people healthy and not ha happy, but what they're eating. And he, he came up with, wow, isn't this interesting that you eat differently and you eat these products you don't have teeth decay, or you don't have uh, uh, kids that end up with all their teeth are all, all malformed because of what they're eating and to what extent they are not eating. So that, that's an interesting, it's at Weston A. Price, that's it, a uh, group in the States, and you can look that up. But there's other protocols that come through if you do this or do this or do that, which is mainly food, in, in that case, not pharmaceutical, and by the way, people are getting better. So I learned about that, and, and, uh, there's, and, and doctors got their CMEs, which is Continuing Medical Education Hours of Credit, and we did three conventions, one in Toronto, one in Niagara Falls, overlooking the American Falls from the, hotel, uh, from the restaurant there, and we did the only medical convention ever done in the Grand Princess Caribbean Cruise Line. We did a Western Caribbean cruise uh, for seven days, and we did 38 hours retraining, all approved by the Medical Association, and boy, I should probably just be doing that today, because it was like the doctors loved it, because we, we, we rented the rooms as well, made a buck on that, and lo and behold, there's a whole bunch of hours that they had retraining based on going for a cruise with their family. And, and so I have know a little bit about some of the training, some of what's required, and to what extent people are getting healthy or not healthy with what the present system is. We had the old Bourbon Street Station, which is Cherry Hill Mall. It used to be the old Bavarian. I took that over from the owner and opened that up and, and, and did that for a year. And, and boy, I learned a whole bunch about a bar and if you do or do not want to own a bar. And, uh, but music was there seven days a week and I excited, got really excited about that. We had a lot of fun. And my kids learned all about cooking real fast and, uh, and ended up that I knew I didn't want to run a bar, but I wouldn't mind running the theater. So that's what happened. And later on, the opportunity came at the Western Fair where they're going to tear down the uh, IMAX. It was there nine years, it was losing money, so they shut it down. I said, well, maybe I could do a deal. And it was only, uh, 50, I offered them $1,500 a month to rent this with my light, sound, projection, no, or, or my heat, hydro, uh, all the, uh, the labor for, for maintenance, and uh, 4,800 free parking spots, and you know, opportunity to be in on the Western Fair. And they said, yes, 
proviso, I had to put in some capital equipment to make this all go. So I had to come up with the, and I got a quote of a quarter million dollars to do it, 200 and some thousand. I said, why not? We'll put a stage in there where the, where the IMAX screen was. We'll put some lights in. We put some microphones in. We put a few more seats in. There's only 305 seats. I went up to 600, put a little balcony in, and lo and behold, uh, I was supposed to open in six months. It never happened. My building permit took nine months, which is woo, which got me real interested. And so how I'm going to go, and then after the quarter million was spent, it was being spent right, plus I was uh, not even way close to be opening. So I took over the construction of that, and uh, about eight months later we opened uh, $1.5 million it cost, but we opened and ran it for four years, uh, with seven days a week with, with great shows in there. We had 150 lights, we had projection systems going, we had TV, we had movies going, so it was a private uh, performing arts center, and I was in the black, although the red, the 1.5 million was never expected, so I had to really economize, try to find out how you do this. I should have never done it in private. In, in hindsight, I should not have been a for-profit. Had I been a not-for-profit, I would have got government grants, city grants, and that's where I made my big mistake, is, is London kind of likes not-for-profit, and everybody else making a buck is, by the way, so we want to change that, and that's one of the things I want to get elected to say, no, 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 you're not a second-class citizen in London if you're not part of a not-for-profit. You're part of, 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 of people that are going to increase and grow the city, and to the extent that we now have uh, some, some talent, and they made some money, they can give it to the city or give it to things, and that's, that's what I'm, I'm pushing right now. So other than that, we had uh, one of the things I got involved with here. Um, nutraceuticals and, and the health care. So, so based on that, I sold a couple of the companies off and, and I got involved with politics. Now it's a new day and it's, a, it's, it's now is what I'm, why I'm doing this is to, to see if we can make London a better place. And what I'm finding out is that, wow, these are why uh, business people do not run for election because they, they're, there's such a, a, a system in place. And I found out very quickly that you cannot change the system unless you're in the system. And, and being outside, I now know why some of the people are walking around in Victoria Park. I now see why, how we're losing our democracy. And I've got another video to talk about that. But I think the exciting time is I think we are, are, are getting better in London. London's going to be a better town. There's some things that I'm going to do, hopefully, to make it better. And these 10 uh, videos are, are what basically I'm going to be measured on. And, uh, and so hopefully I can encourage your help uh, to make this happen because we need... Uh, groups. We need people that, that will, will get together and move ahead and so that we can identify how we get you money, how we get you the effort, and how you get to the ideas and hopefully connect all these dots together so we can create some jobs, have people move to the city, and are very, very happy to be here. So, so basically that's uh, a bit of my history, um, what, I'm, what I've been doing and to what extent uh, um, I've got involved with the city over the years and I'm excited that I think there's some great future ahead and, uh, and we'll see just uh, how this all plays out, but thank you.